From the national headquarters of RT America in our nation's capital, hello again, everybody. I'm Rick Sanchez. As we begin this newscast, I want you to stand by because we're going to be taking you to uh, ground level on the streets of uh, Venezuela for a report from Caracas. We're also going to be following reports of what appears to be the end of the government shutdown here in the United States. We're all over it, but we're going to begin with signs that the U.S. attempt to uh, change out presidents in Venezuela may be falling flat. And the reasons may include the inability on the part of the United States and others to form a worldwide coalition of countries that are willing to back uh, the United States uh, moves. In other words, uh, to get enough countries essentially that are ready to outwardly recognize Juan Guaido as the interim president of uh, Venezuela. By the way, l let me be clear. And I want to be very fair about this as I present this, this news. The, the, the fact that there are countries around the world that aren't following the U.S.'s lead to recognize Guaido as the president uh, or the new president of Venezuela does not mean that those countries necessarily back the socialist government of Nicolas Maduro, whose policies have certainly been coming under question. All the latest from Venezuela on this day is coming up, but we also want to share with you at least a running scorecard so you get a better sense of who's where, right, on this whole thing, of which countries have or have not agreed to recognize Wido. We're going to break it down for you on a map, as the U.S. has suggested that they do. So we offer all of this right here on the News with Rick Sanchez because we are convinced, as we like to say, that it really is time to do real, balanced, and fair news once again. Joining us now for the very latest on what's going on inside Venezuela, we go directly to Caracas. Uh, Lucas uh, Corner is a correspondent who's been diligently covering this story for us. Uh, he's with uh, Venezuela Analysis. Lucas, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Please uh, get us started by describing what the situation there is right now on the ground in Venezuela. Well, right now, Juan Guaido is speaking in the east of the city among supporters, call, once again calling on the military to overthrow Maduro, as well as making other announcements. Meanwhile, life continues as normal in most parts of the city. People, businesses are open, people are buying things, people are going about their business without any real interruptions, although, you know, as if nothing had happened the past three days, despite the violence that we've seen the past few nights. But it seems like at the moment the United States made its decision to, uh, I guess, anoint, choose, whatever word you want to use, uh, Guaido as the interim president of the country, it seemed like at that moment there was a lot of reaction. Take me through the moment when Guaido goes out and declares himself the president and what the guttural reaction was right then and there from the citizenry of Venezuela. Well, Juan Guaido was speaking to an opposition march in the east of the city, uh, in the middle class eastern part of the city, when he made this self uh, swear, he sw self swore himself in as president of Venezuela. The, of course, the reaction among his supporters was jubilant and enthusiastic, though they're, you know, among the six million people who voted for President Nicolas Maduro, evidently there is, you know, a, a sense of rejection and, and confusion of how this previously unknown figure, who was just elected by the National Assembly on the 5th of January, and was unknown to the country beforehand, who won 97,000 votes in 2015, but has not otherwise won an election, is now the president of the country. And, you know, these people, the, the, the Chavistas, the, this large block of the population, obviously rejects Guaido and his pronouncement. It's important to note that after his announcement, Guaido literally disappeared and was not seen in public until today when he's giving his press conference now, which is a strange behavior for someone who is now supposedly the president of the country. So it seems seems like those, the, the, the way you're describing it, there's almost like an eerie calm right now in Venezuela. Uh, uh, a day, two days ago, we, we thought the country would be coming apart. But since then, it seems like because so many countries have either remained neutral um, or not uh, decided to favor uh, Guaido, uh, especially the two big powerhouses, China and Russia, whether that's kind of um, applied the kind of pressure that's tempered or quelled the situation. Give me your take on that. 
I think it's really important to note that the, this, this, the, this, things are not going to plan as Washington had for, for saw it. Really, this coup, as we're seeing in, in progress, has, has hit roadblocks. I mean, as is indicated by the fact that you did not have the massive, interna the unanimous international response they were going for. You, ha you have countries like Mexico and Uruguay calling to mediate. You have the armed force, and most importantly, the armed forces, despite how many times Juan Guaido calls on them to overthrow Maduro, remain with the Constitution elected president. And that is a key factor in maintaining this government. So the fact that Juan Guaido, that, that Mike Pompeo backtracked on his initial refusal to withdraw U.S. diplomatic personnel and are now withdrawing some of them, that's a, that's a huge uh, change in U.S. policy. And clearly there, there is chaos in Washington uh, with regard to what is the next move you know, on the ground, because they clearly are unable to unseat Maduro you know, at this time. But help me understand, because I'm a results-oriented person, and I'm sure you are. I'm sure most people are, right? Let me see results. Give me results. If, if you look at the results of the Maduro presidency, it's been horrible. I mean, Venezuela's in really horrible shape while he's been president. I don't want to start a conversation whether it's his fault or somebody else's fault. Just results alone. So you would think, if I was to tell the people of Venezuela, okay, you have horrible results in your country, here's a possibility for a change that they would all jump up and down and say, great, I'll take it. I don't even care who it is, right? And yet, we're not seeing that. Why is that tempered uh, reaction to a change in a government that's been leading a country showing nothing but catastrophic results? I think that that's exactly right in the sense that Nicolas Maduro, though extremely unpopular, does have a solid floor, around 30 percent of the population. He is unpopular, but the opposition is equally or more unpopular mm. than Maduro. It's a data analysis, which is an opposition-aligned pollster, released a, a poll in October, which showed that the, the National Assembly, uh, who is now headed by Juan Guaido, has a 70 percent disapproval rating. Opposition parties have disapproval ratings of up to 80 percent. So the, the majority of the Venezuelan public may reject Maduro, but they equally represent a, a largely ineffectual uh, U.S.-backed opposition leadership, which they not only perceive as incapable of really bringing about real change, but not actually having their interests at heart, given that most of these leaders are, you know, as Juan Guaido, educated in elite universities. Juan Guaido was at George Washington University. He also studied at the neoliberal IESA think tank, with the home of Venezuela's Chicago boys. That these are these people are not. They have not been to the barrios. They have not. They're not in touch with people's ordinary problems, and that's why this same poll showed that 86 percent of Venezuelans say that the number one issue is either the economy or social issues like crime, uh, access to social services. So this is the issue is not necessarily the overthrowing the government because they don't view that as resolving those issues. Though they de definitely there is immense discontent and dissatisfaction with the leadership of Nicolas Maduro. Does Guaido lose points with the Venezuelan people in the mere fact that he is being propped up by the United States. I think that that's definitely, I mean, with regard, especially from the, the basis of Chavismo, both those who continue to support uh, Nicolas Maduro, but those who historically voted for Hugo Chavez, that, which is the majority of the population, this majority of the population, that 60 percent, according to data analysis poster, who opposes U.S. sanctions, they don't view kindly upon the United States coming in, especially an extremely unpopular figure himself, Donald Trump, who has spoken nothing but terrible things about Latin American countries and their peoples, to come and appoint a president. President. You know, obviously that is very poorly viewed here in Venezuela. The question is, you know, Juan Guaido, if, if I were Juan Guaido right now and I wanted to be president of Venezuela, I would go to the barrio. Instead of hiding for two days not being seen, I would be in the barrios talking to people, making myself seen, and talking to people about their ordinary problems. He is not doing that. He clearly is just getting his marching orders from Washington. So Guaido is not visible right now. He's, other than the first uh, declaration he made where he announced himself the interim president, he generally hasn't been seen out in the street since then. He, after he made that self-swearing in on Wednesday afternoon, he was not seen in public until this afternoon when he gave his press conference. Final question. In uh, the situation, as far as you have been able to tell, either in Caracas or throughout the countryside. Is there any sense of either uh, pandemonium, uh, desperation, or that something big is about to uh, blow in the country, either in terms of protests or in terms of uh, political instability? 
No, the atmosphere is definitely a kind of an eerie calm in that sense that people reject. The, although there has been violence in various communities at, at, in the last three nights, the overwhelming majority of Venezuelans, they lived through the violence of 2014, the violence of 2017. They don't want their communities their, to be destroyed, their, their prop, public and private property be damaged, infrastructure, etc. They, they're not taking part in these, these violent uh, protests. And the, 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 the desire of most Venezuelan people is to have their, their, their most pressing everyday issues resolved and not have any kind of violent uh, outcome, which, you know, is very real given the escalation that the United States is pushing right now. Lucas Cornor, thank you, my friend, for taking time to taking us through this. Uh, good luck there in uh, Venezuela, and uh, we'll be checking back. Thank you once again. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.